Hello everyone, my name is Pixelriffs and welcome back to the Minecraft Survival Guide. I hope you're all having a good day. In today's episode, we begin at the bottom of a very large hole where we have dug down to Y32 in the moss mining chunk here in the mountain. We've started to uncover some ores that are a little different to the ones that we will find at the top. There's a bunch of copper, occasional bits and pieces of iron starting to make themselves known, even our first lapis, which is very exciting, but I have started to run into a problem. It's okay right now because I went back and repaired it at the village more recently, but I am finding more and more that I need to repair my hoe and my other tools in short order, and the stuff that I have to do this already takes a little bit too long. There are, of course, some methods of getting XP that we've explored previously in the series, which can be pretty effective in short bursts, like smelting resources, for example. If we grab a bunch of iron ingots out of here, yes, we're going to get a bit of XP, which will go towards repairing my tools. But typically, those resources are relatively limited and require a decent amount of effort on the part of the player. One setup could be to get a farm set up for something like cactus and have that continuously go through a system smelted by furnaces and then disposed of in some sort of collection chest or even, you know, dispensed out into lava. And that would allow the furnace to store XP over time until you simply collect it from the furnace anytime you're ready and whatever XP that furnace has accumulated so far gets transferred to you for repairing your tools. You could do the same with kelp if you wanted to. That's quite a popular design actually since it gives you dried kelp which you can then use as a furnace fuel block and we'll look into kelp in future but it's not the way I want to resolve the situation today. Some of the other common approaches include mob spawner farms, like the ones we've set up in the past, this spider spawner, the zombie spawner further down in the world, and the cave spider spawner over at the abandoned mine shaft, which allow us to easily kill mobs for little bursts of XP, and also acquire a handful of resources if we feel like getting hold of those. But typically these mob spawners rely on the speed of the spawners themselves, which will produce mobs every about 10 to 40 seconds, which is Honestly, not the fastest, even when they produce large bursts of mobs like this. Even here at my cave spider spawner farm, where I have three cave spider spawners working in tandem, it's pretty clear that not all of the spiders are getting up here as efficiently as they could be because of spiders' tendency to climb walls, and there are minor things we can do to improve that or simplify this design, but realistically, it's not providing spiders at the rate we want. And for repairing my tools, it's honestly not the most convenient thing we could make. It starts to feel a little slow, especially when you've been playing the game for long enough that you know what it's capable of. And so really, for the last little while, my approach to farming XP has really been to interact with villagers because they provide a pretty hefty amount of XP with each trade. They can trade multiple items multiple times per day, and usually it gets your XP filled up pretty quickly. You can also acquire some very useful stuff stuff from them in the form of stuff like golden carrots, rare blocks that are a bit of a pain to mine, and enchanted books from the folks like the librarians, even diamond tools from our blacksmiths and so forth. But I've increasingly begun to find this method a little inconvenient. First of all, it requires you to stick around the village so that the villagers can refresh their trades and you can take advantage of the ones which get locked up every so often when they unlock them. And in this case, it's not really something that I want to spend a bunch of time farming wood for sticks so that I can trade with the Fletcher every time, and the string trade, which is obviously fueled a little bit by the spider farm, is useful but ends up getting locked after a few short trades. Basically, anytime I want to repair my tools, I have to spend multiple in-game days at this village, which seems like an inefficient use of my time when we could be going to a more efficient experience farm and topping up our tools within a couple of minutes. And while one solution to this might be to expand the village population or set up a villager trading hall where trading can be a little bit more convenient and there are multiple types of villagers like the Fletchers and so forth. That's something I plan to do later in the series at a base project where we're going to have villagers available more readily. And so today we're going to take a different approach. We're going to top up on fireworks, I'm going to reattach my shield and I'm probably going to drop off some of my more valuable tools and armor just in case because this next method is going to be a little dangerous. We're going to return to the end and set up an enderman farm. So welcome back to the end. Population, you and 70 Endermen. And potentially the Ender Dragon if it's your first time here, but we've dealt with that a couple of times by now. The first thing we're going to do is collect a bunch of Ender Pearls. I have a few in stockpile already, but I would like to get more. And this is more or less an illustration of how our life is going to be for the remainder of this video, but we'll get to that. Because we're going to be building Nembon's Ender Mini farm design. And that design relies on one thing in particular, actually it relies on two things in particular. And the first, unfortunately, once again, is that you need 
need to be playing in Java Edition. Once again, <laughs> sincere apologies to the Bedrock folks, but this is one of those farm designs that works best in Java Edition because of the way Java Edition spawns hostile mobs. The second thing is that we need to know about Endermites, and Endermites are something I haven't really encountered in this series yet because I don't use Enderpearls much as far as my day-to-day -day gameplay goes. However, for an Enderman farm, they are pretty much essential, and an Endermite has a small chance to spawn every time you throw an Enderpearl, and Endermen do not like it when they do, and they all rush in towards it. I cannot believe that was my first Ender Pearl, and I got an Endermite to spawn. Can we just acknowledge that? Honestly, some days the tutorial thing, it takes a while, <laughs> it takes a, a few minutes to get the results you want, and sometimes it happens with the first Ender Pearl you throw. That was absolutely brilliant. So, as we can see, Endermites, when they spawn, attract a lot of Endermen in towards their area. If Endermen have spawned, they will try and get to the Endermite and kill it. And Endermites are basically silverfish, like from the spawner in the stronghold in the overworld, they don't really take a whole lot of killing. Unlike silverfish, endermites also don't burrow into stone around them, so typically when an endermite spawns, if it isn't killed by an enderman or a player, then it's going to despawn within two minutes anyway. So for the farm we want to set up, we need to make sure that our endermite remains persistent, and that's why we are going to name tag it and trap it in a minecart so that it stays fixed in one place, all the endermen will be drawn towards it, but it won't despawn. So if you haven't got hold of name tags already, you can typically find them in dungeon loot chests, you can fish them up from fishing, or you can trade them from librarians. They are relatively common once you know how to find them, and with emerald trading with the villagers you can get hold of them very, very easily. So we're going to take a name tag or two to the end to make sure our endermites are persistent. I'm bringing three of these with me, frankly, because there's a chance that we might lose an endermite at some point during this process, and I want to make sure that we don't have to return to the overworld once we've started this process, because building this farm is something we can just do all in one go. We're going to be trapping the endermite in a minecart, so I'm going to bring some powered rail, some regular rail and a minecart to make sure we trap it. We're going to need a bunch of leaves, some solid blocks, we'll also need enough blocks that we can turn into slabs to pave the way out to where we're going to build this. We've also got some carpet, which is essential for spawn proofing against endermen, and in some cases we're even going to be placing that carpet on top of string so that the endermen can't teleport to a solid block underneath the carpet, because occasionally the game does end up playing fast and loose with the endermen teleportation thing. We're also going to make a bunch of hoppers and bring a collection chest with us, so we'll probably need six hoppers and then we'll leave two of those as chests for collecting all of the ender pearls. And believe me, there are going to be a lot of ender pearls. Okay, I think we have more or less everything we will need. Might bring a few more stacks of deep slate and a stone cutter with us to convert it all into slabs. I think that'll do. Let's go back to the end. So you may remember from the episode we did about building a hostile mob farm in the overworld that in Java Edition, Natural mob spawning happens best when it's lower down in the world. There is no better place to demonstrate that than the end, because once we reach the edge of the island over here, we are looking down into an empty void with absolutely no blocks in it whatsoever, and that is one of the best places we can possibly set up a farm, because we can build it as low down in the world as we want to, as long as we make sure we stay above Y0, because below that you can't place any blocks and you end up falling into the void and dying. The best place to build an enderman farm is out in the void away from this central island, because naturally the central island allows endermen to spawn in a pretty spread out fashion. As long as they're within 128 blocks of the player, endermen will spawn in the distance, so much so that you can't even aggro them when you look at them like this. They're just simply too far away for the player's eyeballs to register. You can look at this enderman over here with a spyglass, and he's not going to do anything about that. He's also going to look really kind of high contrast when you see the void sky that close up. But what we're going to do is build this farm as far away from the end island as we dare. We're going to build it at least 128 blocks from any spawnable blocks that are part of the island here, and we're going to do that so that we can force all of the endermen it is possible to spawn at once to spawn on a single platform. This entire island's worth of endermen can be crammed into a much smaller space. But the first thing we need to do is make sure we can get down that far, and the way we're going to do that is by placing a column of lava right here, and then once it's finished flowing all the way down to the bottom of the world where the void begins, we are going to pour a bucket of water down next to it and convert all of the flowing lava into cobblestone. This will take a little while because it takes a while for the lava to spread downwards, it's got about 70 or so blocks to fall, and in the meantime I'm going to tuck all of my valuable stuff, with the exception probably of my elytra, into my ender chest here. And if we end up falling into the void and losing our elytra, we do have a couple of backups, so that's not the biggest deal in the world. I'm probably going to keep my shield on me just so that I can defend myself against endermen if we find ourselves up against them, but 
but we really don't want to lose any of our equipment in the void here. Which brings me to another lightly interesting fact. Did you know that you can break shulker boxes by punching them and they will still drop the shulker box? It's very, very useful to know if you don't have any pickaxes and stuff on you. Anyway, it seems like this lava should now have reached the level of the void. I don't see it generating any further down, which means we can place a bucket of water two blocks along. We're not converting the lava source there into obsidian. We're converting all of the lava adjacent to this into cobblestone. We can also pick up the lava source because we're done with that now. We're going to place that back in our backup gear chest. And once the lava is finished flowing away here, it'll be safe to go down. We can keep the water source here for now and we need to grab some blocks because we're going to be building some stuff down at the level of the void. For this, we're going to break out the stone cutter. We're going to turn some of these cobbled deep slate into slabs. I feel like deep slate tile seems like a nice formal way of getting out there. And we're going to make sure we have at least 128 of these because, of course, we have to make sure we're 128 blocks from the island. Now, a quick note about Enderman spawning and teleporting. First of all, if we place down some slabs, Enderman will not be able to spawn on these. Lower half slabs specifically, of course. If you build top half slabs, then they will be able to spawn on those. But we're going to be using lower half slabs to bridge out into the void. That said, if any Endermen have already spawned in the area and you end up aggroing them or they're aggroed by something else, it is possible for them to teleport to lower half slabs. It doesn't happen as often, but it can happen because their teleportation looks for anything solid that they can stand on in the area. So it's not always safe to spawn proof against Endermen with slabs because sometimes they can teleport to those locations. As usual, the best defense against Endermen is often to stand in an area where there is less than three blocks worth of available height. If there aren't three air blocks for them to stand in, then they potentially risk suffocating themselves if they warp to this spot and the game doesn't let them do it. But if we make this area here out of lower half slabs, they could still potentially teleport to that, meaning they're just waiting on the roof and potentially out of reach of the farm we want to make. Over the community's various years of testing this, players have found that one of the most effective ways to spawn proof against Endermen is to build up multiple layers of carpet. Carpet being something we put on top of blocks makes it naturally spawn proof, but it also blocks airspace here for Endermen and they have trouble teleporting to areas like this. So typically for the rest of this farm we are going to be spawn proofing areas against Endermen with multiple layers of carpet and that will be especially useful when it comes to safeguarding our Endermite. Right, now I'm done explaining that, the lava is more or less gone, so it's time for us to make our move. We're going to leave the water source here, we're going to dip down in the water and it would be nice to have a respiration helmet on us right now, but I think we can just about make it stepping out of the water to one side, just ever so slightly to regain our oxygen like that. And what we're going to do is get down to the level of the void as fast as possible, and then we're going to be placing a lower half slab basically on the bottom block of this pillar of cobblestone. And this part is where you really start to clench a little bit. Okay, being extra careful that we're putting that in the right place, I think... We now have a safe slab to stand on, and the lava should disperse from the blocks around us. And if I check my coordinates right here, we are standing at block coordinate Y0. That's very, very cool, and I'm very glad we were able to do this first try. Our floating point coordinates, the one next to X, Y, Z, are showing us at 0 0.5. This is the lowest point in the world that we can possibly build. You can't place a block technically at Y0. We're basically standing on Y0 right now, and we're going to leave this water column here just as a way for us to get back up to the island. We need to be 128 blocks away from our starting point, so we're just going to be placing two stacks of slabs heading out this way from the island. We're actually heading north doesn't really matter which direction we do this in but we are heading in a northwards direction and because we're building all of this out of lower half slabs it's okay to look up take a break and you know relax your crouching fingers a little bit you could also toggle crouch from the settings if you wanted to just don't look up at the areas of the island where endermen are spawning because chances are if one of them meets you on this bridge it's going to knock you into the void that's pretty much game over okay we have now placed 128 lower half slabs leading us out here into the void and this is where we're going to start building the farm. Now naturally we'll set up a more formal entrance to and from this area. For right now, since we still got our elytra on, we can fly back up to the island once again, making sure that we don't look dead at any endermen in the process, which is <laughs> easier said than done when they spawn in such large numbers. We're going to do this in stages just so we're not taking absolutely everything out there with us, but we're going to start off by bringing some carpet, the hoppers for the collection area and the chests, a little bit of string to place the carpet on 
on. This is one of the slightly more nerve-wracking segments of this, and I think that'll do to start off with. You can absolutely widen this path out if you want to, and we'll probably do that in future, but I'm pretty comfortable with it as it is. We're going to be placing a couple more slabs either side here so that we can place string against those, and from here, we're going to be building out a platform of carpet. This is going to feel a little bit nerve-wracking stepping up onto this, and it's vitally important that you don't accidentally punch out the string and then walk onto this, because if you break the string, the carpet on top of it is going to break. But from here, we should be able to edge out over this platform, place a couple more pieces of string there, and this is going to be the area where we stand to use the farm and kill the Enderman. On one side of this, we're going to be placing the collection chest, and we can make a double chest there, and then from this, we can set up a pad of hoppers that's going to be facing into the chest here. We'll place carpet on top of these as well. Hoppers should not be spawnable for Enderman, but it's going to make building the farm out here a little easier. Oh, that is phase one complete. <laughs> it feels good. Let's head back and get some leaves. I'm feeling a bit more confident now, so I think we're probably going to bring the pickaxe with us so that we can mine up some of this deep slate if we miss it. We're going to be bringing a couple of stacks, a bunch of leaves, and the carpet as we did before. We can probably put the string back away as well. And now this platform is large enough that we can swoop down and land on the carpet. I think just for safety, we're going to be placing a row of slabs directly above us. Having slabs in this 2 by 3 area here where we're standing is going to make sure that we don't end up with Enderman teleporting directly behind us or anything, so I think that's going to help out. We'll probably put some carpet on top of this as well and layer that up just in case Enderman teleport to these slabs. We're going to place some leaves headed out in this direction past the platform. We're going to build that up on this side so it forms a barrier wall. And if you hadn't guessed already, the area with the hoppers is where the Endermen are going to be falling in so that we can kill them. Now we do need something solid behind this just to make sure that it isn't made of blocks that we can easily break with a sword like we could with leaves because we're going to be swinging our sword at this area here. So I'm going to build up two rows of cobbled deep slate like this. We're going to put some leaves over the top of that and that's where the Endermen are going to be stepping off into this area once they discover the Endermite that's going to be positioned over here. We'll build the same leaf wall on the opposite side. You don't need to build this out of leaves technically but leaves are probably one of the more accessible spawn proof blocks. Transparent blocks like glass will also work pretty well, but this is basically just guaranteeing that the Endermen don't step out into this area, and we're going to be covering those with carpet once again in a minute or two. We will build up effectively a staircase of leaves at the back here, and leaves are going to be forming the platform that the Endermen are going to walk across to get to this area of the farm as well. And we are going to be placing some trap doors alongside here, so I'm going to have to go back to the overworld for that because I need to bring some wood with me. Now from alongside the chest here, I've built out a row of leaf blocks that we can use to create the platform over here because it's not really possible to build down downwards into the void. We can't push these blocks around with pistons or anything like that. But right here, we're going to be starting a platform that goes out 16 blocks in this direction. That's going to be a walkway for all of the Endermen to run down that makes sure the player can stand at least 23 blocks away from the area where the Endermen need to spawn. We're going to build this area three blocks wide, basically, and that's going to allow for all of the Endermen to run down towards this central section of the farm. Once we reach the end of that platform, we're going to be building three blocks further inward, and then we're going to place a platform of solid blocks. And this is the point we need to be extra careful to light this platform up once we are done building it, because otherwise Endermen will start spawning here when we're not prepared for them yet. This whole platform is going to be a 7x3 area, and you might want to check chunk boundaries just to see if it crosses a chunk boundary or not, but I don't believe that ultimately matters as far as the farm's operation goes. I'm pretty sure this platform is going to fill up the mob cap fast enough that any kind of calculations based on chunk borders do not really matter that much. You can let me know in the comments if it's made a difference for you, but personally I don't need to worry too much about it. Now we're going to be building out an area three blocks wide of leaves all the way around this platform, and this is really to encourage the game to pack spawn Enderman. Because when the game searches for a valid place to spawn mobs, it also checks that there are enough blocks around the outside that it can spawn multiple mobs. And while the leaves themselves aren't spawnable, they still trick the game into thinking there's a lot more spawnable space than there actually is, and the game will try and pack spawn Enderman. It'll still spawn them on this platform of deep slate blocks, but it'll spawn a great deal more of them than it would have otherwise. Okay, now we have our spawning platform all set up. Three blocks in every direction, including diagonally, around this central platform. This is where all of the Endermen are going to be spawning. They're not going to be spawning here yet, thankfully, because we have torches up to prevent that. But in the meantime, we can make a few preparations for the remainder of the farm. The first thing we're going to be doing is taking away this little bridge of leaf blocks that we built around the outside, because we don't want any Endermen taking a shortcut to what we're about to do next. Because right here is where we're going to start building up these layers of carpet, which are going to prevent the Endermen from 
both spawning here and teleporting to this location. And we're going to build this whole thing out in a C shape. I think I'm going to put one more slab here adjacent to this and build it up like so. We'll do the same on the opposite side. And we're going to build this up so the C shape is about five layers tall. We're also going to add this little section on the back to layer up behind our little platform there. And we need to make sure that there are some trap doors here. So I'll probably head back to the overworld now. And on the way back, I'm going to pick up the supplies we need to spawn an endermite and trap it here. Oh, okay, I'm back. Uh, had a bit of a close call with a piglin there because I wasn't wearing any gold armor, but yeah, I'm back. We're going to grab a handful of blocks here just to make sure we have enough. We're going to get our minecart, our minecart rails, something to power the minecart rail with, and of course, we're going to need the name tags. I might also grab a bunch more ender pearls because frankly, I got very lucky in the previous attempts to spawn endermites, and I don't know if 11 ender pearls is going to do the job. So we're just going to aggro a few more endermen from the safety of our shelter, grab a few more ender pearls, and hopefully that should be enough. Honestly, scarcity of enderpearls is something we're going to laugh about once we're done building this farm. So we've got enough enderpearls now. I've just got over two stacks. Yeah, two stacks and five. We should be fine as long as all of this goes according to plan, which it might and it might not. But as we come to a land on our little carpet platform over here, very, very carefully, you don't want to take too much full damage, obviously, at this point, we're going to be building a flat platform here that we can spawn the endermite on. And of course, this is something that we need to make sure we're not too far away from otherwise it would spawn enderman and that's really not what we want so a little three by three area over here will be all we need to set up the rail that's going to capture the endermite in it i'm going to make sure this powered rail is directly over this section of carpet here at the very front of the c shape of carpet that we've made i'm going to power the minecart rail we're going to put the minecart on here and we're going to leave that to spin but we're going to build up a larger platform around that because i really don't want this endermite to knock me off into the void and we have to name tag the endermite before it gets into the minecart because once the endermite is in the minecart its hitbox is small enough that it's simply not going to be possible to right click on it with the name tag so really what we want to do is build out a large enough area that we can spawn an endermite name tag it and then lure it over to the minecart without it generating in there so here comes the moment of truth i'm going to grab the name tags in one hand i'm going to ender pearl a couple of times we can probably ender pearl just like on the spot here until we end up spawning an endermite and frankly it would be better to do this with armor because it's going to provide a bit of protection from the damage the enderpearls do to us. So what the heck I'm just going to put my diamond and netherite armor back on and if this endermite kills me then I'm just bad at minecraft. Okay we'll pop the backup gear chest back in here and we'll sweep back down to the farm and try and spawn this endermite. As you can see though the platform has already spawned a few endermen so we need to dispose of them very carefully before we start this whole endermite spawning process. I'm just going to carefully nudge them into the void without looking directly at them. There we go, so they don't aggro on us. <laughs> Eerie noises aside, we will be good to go here, and I should have just lit this platform up before I flew away. There we go, a little bit lighter, and <laughs> hopefully we won't get any endermen spawning down here if we need to fly away and get some more ender pearls. but hopefully we shouldn't because this should be a relatively smooth process. Yes, there we go. We have an endermite. Now let's name tag it. There we go. And let's push the minecart around the circuit. The minecart has picked up the endermite. It's in. And once we turn off that powered rail, we should be able to nudge it into the position we want it. The minecart is slowly but surely making its way around the circuit to the powered rail. It should stop on top of the powered rail and then we can break this entire platform back down. I'm going to raise my shield just to nudge it into place a little more firmly. There we go. That's yeah, roughly in the center of the block. It's fine. It doesn't need to be exact. And then we'll sacrifice the remainder of this deep slate platform to the void and get ready to drop our endermite into the farm. Okay, all those blocks have been taken out. The only ones that are left are the ones supporting the powered rail on which the endermite rests. Now, before we do anything else, we do need to make sure that our trap doors are here and open. And that's going to trick the enderman into thinking they can walk off the edge of this platform to get to the endermite up here. To move the endermite, into the farm we need to remove this block which should drop the minecart down onto this top block of carpet we're going to take out that carpet and maybe the carpet around it so that the minecart falls on through and then hopefully we should be able to place a couple more pieces of carpet over the top of that yes there we go just placing it with the pixel of hitbox we have for that carpet below and now the endermite is suspended in this layer of carpet in the farm and once we turn this farm on by removing those torches 
Endermen are going to pile into this area, running over to try and get to the Endermite. They're going to end up in this area down below, where we should hopefully be able to kill them nice and easily. This is really the moment of truth, and in a second or two, the noise is going to get a little bit overwhelming. So I'm probably going to turn down my hostile creature sounds so that you guys can still hear me talk. We're going to remove the lighting from this platform. There are no other lights around here. We could set up a system to turn this thing on and off if we wanted to, but really all I need to do now is run away and run back through the farm, because when I do... The Endermen are going to arrive in pretty significant numbers, and look at them all piling up in there already. That is basically the full mob caps worth of Endermen, and as you can see from the subtitles, our Endermite is still scuttling happily up there in his minecart. Now what happens when we kill a few of these Endermen is the XP and Ender Pearls start piling up in large numbers, and naturally this is going to work better if you have a sweeping edge sword or a sword with sharpness, because the Endermen don't take any damage getting into the farm in the first place. And and that's what makes this slightly different from other Ender Ender farms that you might have seen, where the Endermen take a lot of fall damage so that they can be killed with one hit. You can kill them with a punch if you want to, so that you can repair whichever tools you like. But once you really get this farm going, it's impossible to collect the XP it produces fast enough. So we'll be standing in a cloud of XP like this for a little while, looking at a cloud of Enderman particles. It mends our pickaxe within an instant, and the XP levels continue to trickle in. Naturally, this is also going to fill up the Ender Pearl storage chest here pretty much instantly. So you may want to figure out some kind of method of disposing of the Ender Pearls. We'll get to that in a future episode. And for the sake of my own safety, I think I'm probably going to expand out the area that's covered by carpet and slabs just to make sure that we are extra safe in here against the attacks of any more Endermen. But already our levels are in the 30s and beyond. And once again, I want to say a big thank you to Nembon for making this farm design known so that folks like me can build it. I'm going to leave a link to his original video about this in the description if you want to check that out and show him some love. The man is a next level Minecraft genius and he even works for Mojang now, so that should give you some idea of how useful his skills have been over the years. Yeah, it looks like we might need to do a little bit more spawn proofing of the areas around there. Looks like a couple of Endermen have made it to some areas they shouldn't have, but at least they can't get to the Endermite. That's the main thing. And that is where we're going to leave it for this episode of the Minecraft Survival Guide. I'm going to be repairing all of my tools here, I think, for the foreseeable future, but that's where we're going to leave it for today. Thank you so much for watching. My name has been Pixel Riffs. Don't forget to leave a like on this video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you want to see more, and I'll see you folks soon. Take care. Bye for now. Thank you.